Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for the start of our Radeon RX Vega coverage. Now, I would like to just quickly point out that I only received my Vega sample yesterday, so that was on Sunday. AMD ended up playing the role of the courier and hand delivered it to me over the weekend because apparently the initial Vega 64 shipment got a bit lost along the way. Anyway, those samples should be arriving later this week. And if you are interested in a bit more detail about how I got this card here over the weekend, check out the story in yesterday's Unboxing Boxes episode. The good news is, like most, I was aware that Vega would be being released on the 14th. So the second I was done testing, Threadripper quickly changed gears and began GPU testing. All the data in this video is 100% fresh. I've recorded it all over the last few days using the latest available drivers. And as usual, all the GPU testing has been conducted on my Core i7 7700K test machine, clocked at 4.9 gigahertz. For now, I only have numbers for the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, 1080, 1070, and 1060, as well as the Radeon RX 580 and Fury X. The good news though, is we have results for the 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions. Before we jump into the benchmark results, though, I'll quickly go over some specifications for all the Vega models. Without beating around the bush, here's the lineup. At the head of the family, we have the liquid-cooled edition of the RX Vega 64, and this model features 64 compute units for a grand total of 4,096 stream processors, or cores. This model will operate at a base frequency of 1,406 megahertz with a boost frequency of 1,677 megahertz. That's a far cry from the 1.9 to 2 gigahertz NVIDIA's GPUs boost up to, but we all knew the green team would still come away with a clock speed advantage. Anyway, even at this frequency, the liquid cooled version of RX Vega 64 boasts a peak single precision throughput of 3.7 teraflops. That's more than the 11.3 teraflops of the GTX 1080 Ti, and roughly 60% more than the Fury X. The air-cooled model, known simply as RX Vega 64, has the same number of cores, they're just clocked 11% lower at a base frequency of 1249 MHz and 11% lower for the boost of 1546 MHz. As you might have guessed, this has reduced the peak single precision throughput by 8%. Then we have the cutdown RX Vega 56, which I'm testing in this video. It features 56 compute units for 3,584 stream processors, and that's a 13% reduction in core count when compared to the 64 version. All three models come fitted with 8GB of second generation high bandwidth memory, which provides a bandwidth of 484GB per second for Vega 64, and 410GB per second for Vega 56. The only concerning specification here is the board power rating, which sees a liquid-cooled model slapped with a 345-watt rating, 295 watts for the air-cooled model, and just 210 watts for Vega 56. The base model black version of the Radeon RX Vega 64 is coming in at $500 US, and that's the current MSRP of the GeForce GTX 1080. And here AMD says it will become the new GPU king. The limited edition air-cooled version will come in at a $50 premium, so that's $550 all up. Meanwhile, RX Vega 56 will come in at $400 US, and that of course prices it alongside the GTX 1070. Meanwhile, the liquid-cooled Vega 64 model will come in at $600, undercutting the GTX 1080 Ti by $100. In my opinion, the Radeon RX Vega 56 looks to be the best value proposition, and as the most affordable model, I'm kind of glad this is where we're starting. So then I think it's about time to start looking at those blue bar graphs. Please note, because I have tested 25 games at three resolutions, there are 75 graphs in this video. That being the case, I will just focus on the 1440p results for my commentary, so this video doesn't run for over an hour. The 1080p and 4K results will quickly be shown first before discussing the 1440p numbers. One last and very important note, please be aware I'm no longer testing with AMD or NVIDIA reference graphics cards where I can, as I strongly recommend viewers avoid these models, and thankfully most consumers do anyway. So rather than test with the GTX 1070 Founders Edition, I'm using the MSI Gaming X model, which is a little bit faster thanks to better cooling and a bit of factory overclocking. Anyway, I'll list all the graphics card used in the video description. Right, to the benchmarks. First up we have Far Cry Primal, and here's a quick look at the 1080p and 4K results. Vega 56 does trail the GTX 1070 at 1080p, but by the time we hit 4K it is able to pull ahead. 
At 1440p, the margins were slim, whichever way you look at it, but here the Radeon graphics card was able to hit a lead of 5%. Moving on to Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, we see that AMD's new mid-range to high-end contender trails the GTX 1070, though this time it matches it at the 4K resolution. Switching back to 1440p, we see that performance is much the same. Technically, Vega 56 was a frame slower, but, you know, margin of error and all. So, yeah, pretty much the same performance in Wildlands. Next up, we have the hugely popular Overwatch, and this is a title that was historically favouring the green team, and we find that yet again, that is the case here when comparing the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 GPUs. The GTX 1070 comfortably beat the new Vega GPU at 1080p and 4K. Looking at the 1440p numbers, we see that the 1070 is 9% faster on average, which is a decent win for NVIDIA. When it comes to hardcore parkour, Vega 56 gets around okay, matching the GTX 1070 at 1080p, though it did lose its grip at 4K. Looking at the 1440p results, the 1070 was a few frames slower, so a small win here for the red team. Whether you're mind controlling messenger pigeons or moonlighting as a tank driver, either hobby is best enjoyed with Vega 56. We saw a nice little bump in performance at 1080p and a solid 13% gain at 4K. For our resolution of choice, Vega 56 offers 11% more performance over the GTX 1070, which is certainly a noteworthy gain and a great result for the red team in Battlefield 1. AMD lacks the mad driver hacks they need to take the lead in Watch Dogs 2, and as a result, Vega 56 falls short at both 1080p and 4K. I was actually very surprised to find the GTX 1070 providing 15% more frames at 4K. That said, even at 1440p, things were starting to get away from the new Radeon GPU, as it was 7% slower with an average of 58 FPS, so a bit of a disappointing result here. Typically, Titanfall 2 has been a game that's favoured the red team in the past, so I was quite surprised to see the GTX 1070 matching Vega 56 in this title. Even at 4K, the Radeon GPU wasn't able to run away with it. We see pretty much identical performance at 1440p, so while not a bad result for AMD, I had expected them to pick up a handy win here. Another game where I expected AMD to do well was Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, and this time they do indeed come away with a win. That said, Vega 56 wasn't that much faster than the Fury X in this title, at least at 1080p. The Fury X does fall away massively at 4K. That said, before its 4GB HBM buffer limits performance, the Fury X does look very mighty at 1440p, and it's just a few frames slower than the new Vega 56 GPU, which seemed a little unlikely. In any case, a win here for AMD. Moving to Mass Effect Andromeda, we find Vega 56 trailing the GTX 1070 at both 1080p and 4K, which is a little disappointing. Looking at the 1440p numbers, there isn't much in it, but still, Vega 56 comes in a few frames slower. Typically, AMD is very competitive in this title, so another worrying sign for Vega. Unlike Mass Effect Andromeda, I've found that in the past, AMD is not super competitive in Dishonored 2, and we certainly see that here when we compare Vega 56 and the GeForce GTX 1070 at 1080p and 4K. Looking to the 1440p results, the GTX 1070 was 14% faster, and that's quite a big margin. Uh, more crucially, whereas the 1070 averaged well over 60 FPS, Vega fell short of that desired frame rate. Looking back to Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, we see that Vega is competitive in this title, but at the same time, it's not really beating the much older GTX 1070 either. It edged ahead at 1080p and 4K, but the results won't really wow anyone. Meanwhile, at 1440p, Vega 56 was a few frames faster, but again, it doesn't really offer anything new at the $400 price point. The Dawn of War 3 results are very much a mixed bag, and we see that here when looking at the 1080p and 4K results. The Radeon GPU was slightly slower at 1080p while it pulled into the lead at 4K. Quite shockingly though, it puts forth by far its best result at 1440p, where it matched the GTX 1080. This is a somewhat baffling result, but having retested it twice, I was faced with the same confusing results. Not sure what's going on here, but I'm keen to look into it a bit more shortly. Dirt 4 threw up some more highly confusing numbers, so again, please take these with a grain of salt until I have more time to confirm them further, or confirm them with another source. Rather than just disregard these results, I retested Vega 56 as well as the GeForce 10 series cards, and I kept finding the exact same results. All the quality settings were the same, and visually Vega looked like it was rendering everything, so again, I'm not quite sure how to explain these ones. 
For whatever reason, though, Vega 56 was able to beat the GeForce GTX 1080 at 1440p and even crush the GTX 1080 Ti's minimum result. This goes against everything we've seen so far, so again, take these with a grain of salt until I can confirm them with at least one other source. Prey is yet another game where AMD typically does very well, and yet we find again Vega 56 struggling against the GTX 1070. Here it's the minimum frame rate or those 1% lows that look particularly bad at 1080p, though by the time we get to 4K the margins are much the same. Again we see this time at 1440p that the minimum frame rate result is an issue for Vega despite the average looking reasonably good. Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 again go head to head and deliver pretty much the same results, this time in For Honor. That said, while it was a dead heat at 1080p, the 1070 pulled ahead at 4K. At 1440p we start to see the 1070 edge ahead, but really we are talking just a 1 to 2 FPS difference at this realistic resolution for these mid-range to high-end GPUs. Quake Champions is a game I've decided to include last minute, and this is the first time I've actually benchmarked this title. Here we see some very competitive results from AMD at 1080p, though things become a bit too overwhelming at 4K. Backing down to 1440p we find mixed results. AMD had the better 1% low while Nvidia peaked a little higher. Overall performance was much of a muchness, so really another draw here. You can't do a 20 plus gaming benchmark series these days without including Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Could you just imagine the comment section? I mean, so many guys still can't let go of GTA 5. There'll no doubt be many, many comments asking why that title wasn't included. Anyway, a bit of a bloodbath here. AMD clearly has some driver development work to do. The GTX 1070 storms ahead at 1080p, delivering 27% more frames. Vega kind of comes back at 4K, but at this point the frame rates are so low it doesn't really matter. Meanwhile at 1440p the 1070 was 24% faster, making this a very convincing win for Nvidia. Here's another new game I've added to the list, Hellblade Sinua's Sacrifice. Unfortunately as this is a new title and it does use the Unreal 4 engine, AMD has some work to do with their drivers. Vega 56 was 10% slower at 1440p when compared to the GTX 1070, and again it was just a few percent faster than the old Fury X. Another old game that I've brought back for this one is Crisis 3, and despite its age, AMD also have some driver work to do here as well. Shockingly, Vega 56 was actually slower than the Fury X at 1080p, though it did pull ahead at 4K. That said, it still trailed the Fury X at 1440p as it turned in GeForce GTX 1060 like performance. Okay, so now we're getting into the low level API testing, and first up we have The Division using DirectX 12. Here Vega 56 looks very impressive, racing ahead at 1080p, and maintaining that strong lead even at 4K. This is also seen at 1440p, where Vega 56 delivered an impressive 94 FPS on average, making it 18% faster than the GTX 1070. The Hitman results are interesting as Vega 56 looks great at 1080p, but when we jump to 4K, things settle down and now AMD is only able to match the GTX 1070. This is also true for the 1440p resolution as both Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 average the same 117 FPS. The only Vulcan title to be included is of course Doom, and here we see at 1080p Vega 56 is able to hit the 200 FPS cap, at least for the average frame rate. Even at the 4K resolution, the frame rate still remained above 60 FPS at all times, and AMD takes the win. Looking at the 1440p results, we see Vega is able to deliver 10% more performance, which isn't bad, though given the RX 580 is almost 20% faster than the GTX 1060, I was expecting a bit more to be honest. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is another title that we've tested using DX12, and this hands the advantage to Vega. AMD won quite comfortably at 1080p and remained ahead for the 4K testing as well. Meanwhile, at 1440p, the Vega 56 car was 12% faster than the GTX 1070, though shockingly just 8% faster than the Fury X. Total War Warhammer was also tested using the DirectX 12 API, and here Vega 56 again beat the GTX 1070 by a decent margin. In fact, Vega was 17% faster at 1440p, though just 9% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Finally, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider, and again, testing was conducted using DX12. That said, keep in mind this is an Nvidia sponsored title, and as such, it tends to favour the green team even when using the low-level API. At 1440p, performance is much the same, and both Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 average 64 FPS. 
I haven't had time to do a full battery of temperature tests, but after monitoring temperatures for around 20 minutes, Vega 56 seemed to peak at 75 degrees and the fan spun up to just 40%, which actually wasn't that bad. For those wondering, overclocking appears very limited at the moment, and I'm not 100% sure if this is an issue with the reference card or it's a software problem. It might actually be a software related issue, but as I said, I haven't really had time to work it out. Anyway, for a reference card, it actually works quite well, but as always, I'm more keen to check out the board partner models. All right, now it's time to see just how power hungry Vega really is. Well, at least the cut down 56 model anyway. Granted, Vega 56 does push total system consumption 13% higher when compared to the GTX 1070. It's actually a small improvement over the RX 580, which I wasn't really expecting to see. So Vega 56 isn't gonna make your power supply sweat or smoke, or whatever it is they do when they're under pressure. Well, that was interesting. It seemed like for the most part, Vega 56 was either able to match the GeForce GTX 1070 or was at best only slightly faster. So yeah, uh, anyway, let's take a look at the average results across the 25 games tested before we move on to then examine the full performance breakdown on a per game basis. Right, so 1080p up first, and yes, this is exactly like what I was expecting to see. Overall, Vega 56 delivered the same experience as the GTX 1070, which is, um, let's discuss that shortly. At 1440p, we find almost exactly the same thing. This time though, Vega 56 is slightly faster. We're talking about a 2.5% margin here though. Meanwhile, Vega 56 was 18% faster than the Fury X, which is a decent step up, uh, especially when you consider that total system consumption was reduced by 8%. Finally, at 4K, we again find similar performance between Vega and the 1070. Vega did edge ahead here ever so slightly, but again, we're looking at pretty much the same experience. All right, let's move on to see how they compare on a per game basis. This certainly gives us a much better picture of what's going on and how well Vega 56 really stacks up. Firstly, there is that suspicious win in Dirt 4, but even if you remove that result, it doesn't really change much. Vega's still 1% faster overall, so not exactly a pantsing, but it's not slower either, I guess. What's worth noting is that Vega found success in most of the modern low-level API titles uh, with solid wins in The Division, Total War Warhammer, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and Doom. It also did well in Dawn of War 3, Battlefield 1, and Resident Evil 7. Where Vega 56 really seemed to struggle was Crisis and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and both games clearly lack driver optimization, so what we're seeing here should be possible to correct. The frame rates in Crisis 3 were all over the place, but I don't think a fix will be too involved. Battlegrounds is obviously a big one, and AMD will want to address the performance here very promptly. Overall, performance looks quite solid, and RX Vega 56 is certainly a GTX 1070 contender, even if it has rocked up to the fight banging its chest over a year late. AMD are all like, better late than never, am I right? It is good that we finally have some competition at these higher price points, but I feel like if you're going to come to the party an entire product cycle late, you kind of have to hit it out of the park, and that's certainly not what AMD have done here, as we've just seen. Uh, there is still much more to be discussed, though, more testing that needs to be done, and as usual, probably a bit of time that needs to pass before we can really put our finger on what it is Vega's offering consumers. For example, we've seen previously where the RX 480 was around 15% slower than the GTX 1060 upon release. Months later, that gap was closed to basically nothing, and AMD's offering became considerably more attractive. Whereas Vega 56 is currently matching the GTX 1070 across a wide spread of games, I can quite easily imagine it being around 10% faster before too long. But as a consumer, should you bank on Vega becoming faster, up to maybe 10% faster, and take the plunge, or instead go with a known quantity in the GeForce GTX 1070? Right now, it is hard to discuss value, so pricing, uh, since the GTX 1070 is selling for well over the MSRP, and even then, availability is really quite poor. Uh, speaking of which, I hate to imagine what availability of Vega is going to be like over the next few weeks, if not months. So in a way, you might actually be forced to wait and see how well Vega matures anyway. On that note, I'm going to wrap this up for now. I realize there is much more testing to discuss, but since I've only had the card for around 36 hours now, this is all we have time for. Expect more testing shortly, along with a good look at Vega 64. 
as I complete more testing, I'll give you guys my honest opinion on Vega, but for now, it's not looking particularly exciting. I suppose that's not really a shock, given what we already knew about Vega. Anyway, expect more coverage soon. I'm your exhausted host, Steve. Time for a nap. <laughs>